All right, caught at the light. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Hello, internet friends. I am like just all over the place with my moto vlogs. <laughs> There's just been so much going on. You guys saw that I went to San Francisco with Ducati. I like put on a new, oh, that light's out. <laughs> I put on a new exhaust on my bike and I just wanted to jump back in and let you guys know how that's been going. The video made it seem very loud. Number one, we were in um, we were in a garage that captured all the sound. And then we used a camera with a relatively sensitive mic. So a lot of you guys were like, everyone's gonna be mad at you. I mean, I even thought that. <laughs> they thought like it's all fun and games until uh, you get in a bunch of trouble for your loud bike. But I'm sure you'll be able to tell now that it is perfectly possible for me to moto hug with my loud little exhaust. And I've been liking it a whole lot. Now I came from imagine my life before my loud exhaust so i've really been enjoying it sounds awesome so you know there's some engineering questions <laughs> that I'll have to address and you know I'm I'm too ignorant <laughs> to know exactly everything I have to do to maybe make sure that the everything's fine with the bike uh, now that I've changed the exhaust some people said okay sorry I'm driving so weird some people said that I uh, need to like retune it or whatever to the exhaust and I got to make sure it doesn't run to rich or lean and all that stuff so I will look into that <laughs> and I'll just make sure to do the best thing for the health of the bike but in terms of aesthetics and sound and weight I'm loving it oh my gosh when I hopped on the bike after we changed it out it was incredible the weight difference I could genuinely feel it a lot of people say that maybe that kind of mod you won't feel that much of a weight difference but I mean you guys saw how big that whole system was under there I lost a lot of weight by uh, leaning her out <laughs> it's hot girl summer <laughs> for this skinny legend <laughs> yeah I love it it sounds awesome it does that little pop thing Hold on let me see if I can get to do it ah did you <laughs> did you hear that it's like a little thunderstorm I love it um, I used to hear like little subtle pops before but now it really now it really pops I shouldn't slow down the speed limit here is 30 miles per hour and in a car that feels so slow at least on the bike you get a little bit of wind so it feels like something but in the car i'm like oh my god it's slow motion <laughs> but anywho i'm loving the exhaust uh it is not louder than dan's <laughs> he's got the m4 exhaust on his uh yamaha mt09 and mine is just a little bit quieter and it has us a, a you know a different pitch it's a different bike with a different exhaust and we complement each other wonderfully when we're on the road i think it's really awesome and if you want to know more about dan's bike he actually made a really super solid moto vlog he's a natural at this he made a video showcasing all the mods and aftermarket stuff done to his bike and some of it's really affordable stuff some of it's bougie but all really worthwhile updates to his mt09 to make it just a like a really mean machine i think that bike is awesome the dark side of japan the marketing for that is so cool too <laughs> i'm stuck in a little bit of a, i wouldn't call it a traffic jam this is kind of like semi bad traffic in milwaukee we really don't get that bad of traffic it's awesome people are commuting home right now and a lot of people use this lake drive to get to the freeway or i don't know it's a it's a solid cruising spot too i was just on north avenue at the top of the bluff and people love to cruise along North Ave so you can hang out at the bars and restaurants there and see tons of cool bikes and low riders and different convertibles and really fun stuff so there's kind of a cool little cruising culture in Milwaukee and there's a lot of little hot spots but I'm going south today I'm gonna take you guys over the Hone Bridge and you know you know don't cancel me I'm wearing like just sneakers <laughs> so sometimes I'm like oh no I was like, yep, yeah, I'm about to just like keep riffing. If you're here for the exhaust update, I think I'm pretty much done with that. Now we're just riffing. So 
I looked up um, Kevlar socks today. I got kind of morbidly curious. It's not morbid. I mean, it is morbid because I was thinking about my ankles. <laughs> I was like, ugh. I want to wear my little sneakers. Sorry, I'm just like screwing around with the sound of the bike. Because like, it is, you know, it can be a little loud. <laughs> Sometimes I gear up extra in motovlog so you can hear me better, but we should be all right. Anywho, I was thinking about my ankles and I'm like, wonder if they make, you know, Kevlar tube socks. And I did find some, some Kevlar, I think they're meant to be worn with like steel toe boots and stuff. And they're, they're aramid and spandex and they're socks with like reinforced ankles and the whole like shaft of the sock. So I'm kind of tempted to try those out. They sell them at just the sporting goods stores and stuff. Tempted to try those out and see if it'd be any good for on the bike. I don't know if they'd be really hot or not, but I think that'd be kind of cool. Kevlar socks, like, I don't know. It's gotta do something. It's better than cotton. <laughs> I wouldn't say that it's a, a replacement for wearing boots, but if you're feeling naughty, like, when I took my motorcycle safety courses, one of the instructors was like, you know, some people are going to be out there in like steel toe boots and moto this and moto that. And he just rides in Chuck Taylors um, in high tops. And I was like, ooh, I got those. So I feel like Chuck Taylors and Kevlar socks could kind of be a power move in the summertime. Speaking of summertime footwear, <laughs> man, I've got so many videos, so many ideas, so many stuff, I, so much stuff I want to catch you guys up on and uh, so much really solid content to make. Uh, so hopefully I can just square away some time. I mean, I'm a busy bee with my regular work. On the footwear end of things, I often wear um, tactical boots in the summertime. I call them my beach boots because <laughs> I'll wear them, uh, well, they're good beach boots, literally, like desert boots. Thoroughgood has these like desert storm tactical boots. And I have like the saw, and I don't know if they're making them right now or not, but that's what I have. And I know they have other versions of their desert tactical boots. So I highly recommend Thoroughgood. I haven't tried other brands, but I know that there's obviously a lot of tactical boot options out there. So I recommend that for the summertime. All right, we're going over the home bridge. It might be a little <laughs> too much for you to hear me. If you guys can hear me, I there's all these like mountains of, of weird white and sometimes blue stuff and I showcase this in a different video but that's all road salt. It's kind of insane. We get a lot of snow in Wisconsin and in order to keep the streets uh, not slippery we have to <laughs> pave it with salt. That one might have a cover on it, I can't quite tell. Uh, it just looks like a little mountain. It looks crazy. Sometimes they cover it with a tarp, but yeah, that's all road salt. And we go through it. I don't know if they distribute to other states. I think that's literally all just for Wisconsin. <laughs> I always wonder like if people try to steal it. <laughs> Anyway, so Thoroughgood, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that I have a long-standing relationship with Thoroughgood boots. Uh, they're made in the USA, even more specifically, <laughs> they're made in Merrill, Wisconsin. And I've just kind of been acquainted with the brand for a while. I don't even remember how I first learned about them. I guess maybe I was just looking up like Red Wing Heritage boots. I was looking for cool work boots. And not that I do any manual labor, but obviously it's a vibe. <laughs> I found Thoroughgood. I thought that was the coolest thing ever that they're made in Wisconsin. It's been so long I don't remember I found them. But I bought a pair of boots from them and that was posted online and all that jazz. I would ride in them a lot. And then uh, they saw it and they reached out to me. So we've had like 
a cool ambassadorship relationship ever since. I mean, it's not a paid relationship, but I don't, I don't care. <laughs> not paid yet. <laughs> they have given me freebie boots and uh, I love them for that. You know, I've got my company Great Lake Supply Co. and I'd like to start being a supply co. <laughs> So I am in the works of, of developing a retailer relationship with Thoroughgood. The only thing is that they've had an incredible year. They've had an incredible couple years. I was talking with them back in 2019 about stocking their boots. And they're like, oh, we've got supply chain issues. You know, there's shortage, shortages. We're growing. They bought some lines from Red Wing while well, Red Wing is um, moving some of their production overseas. And I was like, wow, so exciting. What a great year for you, 2019. Can't wait to circle back in six months and become a, a wholesaler. Okay. <laughs> That's not how it works. I hate when people do the things out of order. I feel like I'm going to get hit. <laughs> so, you know, then 2020 hit and they were, you know, everyone was having supply chain issues and they were busier than ever. And they have, um, they grew, I think, I think, I don't remember if the guy said 26% or 36% between 2020, like just during 2020. And that is wild <laughs> so they've been killing it they have all sorts of different uh, contracts with different government entities and uh, workwear I mean they just cover the whole gamut when it comes to boots and they do lifestyle boots and a lot of their lifestyle stuff is kind of on hold because first and foremost they need to cater to the the uniforms people who need police and military and all that stuff I circled back to talk to them again and got all this Intel and sometime soon <laughs> mark my words and it's in the works i will be a retailer for thoroughgood boots and that'll be a very exciting announcement you know it was so cool to release my coffee uh in november last year and you guys have been loving it that's been my best selling product obviously it's a great consumable so you can buy multiples and i love it i have it every day so if you haven't checked it out you should go to my website and check out my coffee it's ethically sourced it's from guatemala and it's roasted locally. Awesome. Yeah, next up, boots. And I'm hoping to supply other really cool products by uh, local makers or people who I just love what they do. Pretty soon, you'll be able to buy more and more uh, motorcycle things from my store. And I'm pretty pleased about that. There'll be more growth and hopefully there'll be some, you know, highly original products. You know, manufacturing is tough, so it's hard to produce stuff that's not, you know, a predetermined good, like a t-shirt and stuff like that. So I do want to make cool, like, belt bags. I want to make the perfect belt bag that I would genuinely wear on, like, a night out, but also on the bike. So I've got a lot of big dreams for what I want to do. I did my first coffee pop-up a couple weeks ago. It was totally chaotic. <laughs> Because unfortunately I got to the venue a little bit late and it was just a mess and everyone wanted coffee in the beginning and then I like made all this coffee uh, kind of late and it was a whole situation. I did pour over and drip and uh, this time we're not doing pour over. I'm not fast enough for that. I need mad barista skills and I'm just not that accomplished. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there one day I suppose. So yeah, I'm doing coffee pop-ups. It's just like drip and cold brew for now and eventually We'll be doing, um, where am I right now? <laughs> I'm a little turned around. I don't know, where are the damn street signs around here? <laughs> this street, I don't know which street I'm on. <laughs> this is Oklahoma, what the heck is this? I hope this is Howell. <laughs> I don't think it is though. I think, I think this, well, no, 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 I'm going forward. I'm gonna confuse the shit out of everybody, anyways. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm planning on, um, you know, doing little pop-ups and uh, building out like an espresso cart, which will be really fun. Honestly, I think I'm going to end the moto vlog here. We've chatted plenty. I've gotten you up to speed on things and gone through slightly different uh, parts of Milwaukee that maybe you haven't seen before. I'm sure some of that was familiar if you've been watching. But right now, I am slightly lost because <laughs> I uh, went kind of the wrong way. Not really. I think I'm getting warmer. But thanks so much for watching. Until next time, ride safe, go naked, <laughs> follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel. You the best, I love you. Wow, cool, an airplane. Oh yeah, we're not far from the airport. All right. Ooh, I hate this. Until next time, bye-bye. Wake up at the right time.